coming. Uh, I'm State Senator Johnny Dechak representing the 14th Senatorial District, Luzerne and Carbon County. So I'm going to introduce my colleagues and have the table introduce uh, themselves uh, so uh, you know who uh, is gathered here today to talk about the closure of SCI retreat, the proposed uh, closure of SCI retreat. Uh, I have Senator Lisa Baker, Senator John Gordner. Uh, Hank, if you'd like to introduce yourself and your position. Hank McNair, Executive Vice President of Pennsylvania State Corrections Officers Association. Larry Blackwell, I'm the President of the Pennsylvania State Corrections Officers Association. I'm Mark Truskowski, I'm the Eastern Region Vice President of the Pennsylvania State Corrections Officers Association. Two years ago, uh, we gathered at this table, uh, uh, many of the same folks that you see here today, uh, and celebrated uh, the fact that no prison uh, in northeastern Pennsylvania, three uh, were on a list for potential closure, SCI Retreat, SCI Waymore, and SCI Frackville. That was a great day for northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, we were dealt a blow uh, yesterday uh, that in addition to the closure of Whitehaven Center and the loss of over 400 jobs in that state facility, that the administration and the Department of Corrections is proposing to close SCI retreat. That will be the loss of an additional 400 jobs. When you look at the economic impact, it's over $100 million in economic losses to Luzerne County. It's over 800 jobs that are being ripped out of Luzerne County. Uh, I'm very appreciative of my colleagues, uh, Senator Gordon, Senator Baker, to stand with me in this fight. SCI retreats in Newport Township in the 14th Senatorial District, but they recognize this is going to impact the whole economy of Luzerne County. Uh, and I'm very proud to stand uh, with the men and women uh, of the Pennsylvania uh, State Correction Officers Association. They were terrific in the fight uh, to stop the closure two years ago. We're going to mount that same fight. Thankfully, because of my Senate colleagues, we have a new law in the books that requires the Department of Corrections within 90 days uh, to hold a public hearing where the community can make a case uh, that this facility should remain open and they have to defend their decision to close SEI retreat. That's going to be very important. We're going to continue to alert the media of every action that we take, uh, uh, but it is important. That meeting will take place on October 17th. Uh, uh, the location will be announced shortly. We're trying to pin down a location and have it as close uh, to the communities impacted as possible. But having uh, Pisco, and I'm going to first uh, turn uh, to Larry from his perspective, what it means to the families. Yes, there is a large economic impact that we need to talk about and we need to address because it's not only going to impact the families that work uh, and are served at, uh, at these state facilities. Uh, it, it is going to impact every family uh, in, in Luzerne County. But the first family that's going to feel the pain are the members and the workers at SCI Retreat. Uh, so, Larry, if you want to talk about the impact on your workers and what, what this means in terms of public safety and, and straight uh, uh, policy in terms of uh, state presence in Pennsylvania. Right. Um, to start with, we totally disagree with this decision. Uh, we don't believe that you can put a price tag on public safety. The impact that it's going to have on our members is they're going to have to decide in this process where they want to go work and how far they want to drive and the bigger impact on that is when they are driving the impact on the community is going to be if they decide to move out of the area and and we've seen that in closings in the past SCI Crescent uh, was a community so, like this in the west and you know it still feels the effects of losing the prison in that area and again, losing the prison because of uh, budgetary reasons, not because of, um, you, you know, not having the uh, work to be there, you know. So that's, that's the biggest impact that, you know, they're going to have to uh, decide to drive and, and where they're going to go. And, and I think it's important to stress that this is a policy decision uh, above and beyond a budget decision. Uh, I, I think... The men and women who work in these facilities can put four or five, six different items on the table that can save more money than closing down this prison. They're estimating that in the out years, this will save the Commonwealth $40 million. 
we're trying to process those numbers. Uh, we, we, we're going to disagree with those numbers. If you look at the other state facilities that have closed, uh, and there have been numerous, at least three or four in the last uh, decade or more, the Department of Corrections budget has not gone down. It continues to go up. So the cost savings have not been there. Uh, there is going to be a larger policy discussion. And there are some uh, adv advocates that do not want state prisons. Uh, they see things uh, differently uh, than I do in terms of making sure that our communities, our neighborhoods are safe. Senator Baker is the chair of the Judiciary Committee that has oversight uh, over this department, and, and there are, are a lot of important issues, parole and other, that go into some of the numbers that they put out. Uh, and I'd like to, her to speak to that a little bit, but when you see numbers about the prison population going down, that we have uh, operational capacity at other prisons, you have to recognize those numbers uh, uh, you, uh, can sometimes be deceiving. It's easy to have an inmate who has been paroled taken off the books and make it look like your prison population is going down, that there's a trend. Uh, but if you talk to the folks that walk uh, uh, these, these blocks, the toughest blocks in Pennsylvania, uh, those numbers are only going down because we're not, we're not holding parole violators uh, accountable. Uh, so Senator Baker, if you want to speak to, to some of those policies. Thank you, Senator Dicek. I, I think I echo what many people in the area have felt is, what do we deserve uh, this hit? We're losing the potential of uh, a tremendous economic impact, uh, the jobs, and, and why is Northeastern Pennsylvania being asked to bear the sole burden for this? Um, I, I, as the new chair of the Judiciary Committee, we have been looking at issues related to probation and parole. And just yesterday, the administration issued a report about the parolee murders, um, and we will be following up with a hearing, bringing the department in, along with the um, parole board to talk about that, to talk about recommendations, and along with our corrections officers to look at that. The immediate issue, that's the long-term issue that we need to look at. And, and are there things you can do to help address um, parole and um, keep people off the street? that should be off the street and give a second chance to certain people. Yes, I agree there are those. But we have a public safety aspect, and that is key and central that has to be looked at through this entire process. So we have a fight on our hands. We have to all join together to work to make the case. And last time we did that, we made the economic case. We also have to make the community case. And I'll use the example of the Shikshini sewer authority which is providing um, the the ability for the prison to operate and what effect is that going to have on a small municipal authority for the long run are they even going to be able to continue to manage that so there are many questions we need to come to the table with a strong force and demonstrate why we believe retreat should remain open um, and continue to look at how the department is operating. So I, that is my commitment to this process moving forward. Thank you. Senator Gordon. Uh, just to add the support, uh, I represent a part of Luzerne County as well as my home base is Columbia County. Uh, we have a lot of uh, constituents that work at retreat and have worked. And uh, you always look at those that have been uh, in the workforce for 25 or 30 or 35 years that uh, may only have you know, four or five years uh, before they reach retirement. And uh, this is not anything that uh, we expected. Um, I will add the disappointment uh, with Secretary Wetzel as part of uh, a new administration coming in. And even if it's a second term, all of the cabinet secretaries have to go around and meet with each one of us as senators. And uh, I know when uh, Secretary Wetzel is my, in my office, uh, and I'm sure in each of our offices, uh, there wasn't any mention at that time, and it was just months ago uh, that they came through, uh, that this was going to be brought up again. We, we thought when we went through this a little over two years ago, uh, that it was sort of an exhaustive process, and uh, that was going to be it for maybe five years or 10 years or something along those lines. So uh, for us to be going through this again in two years uh, seems uh, unfathomable. Uh, I will add, as mentioned, uh, we do have a new law on the books. Uh, that wasn't around last time so 
uh, thanks uh, because of a lot of folks around the state uh, are, uh, we're not happy about the old process. Uh, there is now a process and it doesn't just look at uh, the prison aspect, but it also does very much in the statute include the community impact. And uh, that is going to be paramount in regard to where this prison is and the community impact uh, in that area. And that is something that uh, we'll be spending some time. Luckily, we still have numbers fresh from two years ago. I say luckily not in a good way, uh, but we do have numbers and we will be gathering those, whether it's from the chamber or those communities, uh, in order to make sure at that October meeting that uh, they not only uh, understand the impact on the families, uh, but on the communities as a whole. And again, it's, it's not a five mile radius or a 10 mile radius, it's a 30 plus mile radius because uh, if you look at uh, where those workers are coming from, they're coming from lots of different uh, places. And again, as Senator Yudicek mentioned, uh, they have uh, really some life-changing decisions to possibly make. Um, it would be great if all of them could go to Dallas, for instance, but they're not all gonna be able to go to Dallas. There may be a handful that can go to Dallas. Uh, so uh, it is going to have to be making some very difficult decisions. And again, I'm very pleased uh, with Senator Baker as the chair of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, she always does a very thorough analysis uh, and already has a couple of hearings scheduled for uh, the end of September and beginning of uh, October. Uh, so we have uh, the means to make sure that we're looking at every angle uh, of this uh, before uh, the governor makes a final decision. And much like two years ago, uh, they were going to close two. Uh, they only ended up closing one uh, because of the response that came out. So uh, while this uh, is a, uh, a challenging course, uh, we're going to put up a tough fight and we'll wait and see what happens uh, three or four months ago when, uh, again, the statute doesn't allow them uh, to do anything immediately. They have to have the hearing and there has to be uh, at least I know four months, I believe, uh, go by before a final decision can be made. So we will put up that tough fight. Thank you. And to underscore two points that Senator Woodner made, we have budget hearings uh, in February uh, each and every year. Uh, the Secretary uh, was before the Appropriations Committee and was asked the question uh, whether or not uh, there were any closures on the horizon uh, for any uh, state correctional institution, uh, and he said no. Uh, uh, so that tells me this is not a budget decision, this is a policy decision. Uh, I'm going to argue uh, that it's bad policy, it's misguided policy, uh, and to uh, Senator Gordner's point about community impact and, and having those numbers, uh, these numbers have only gone up in the last two years. Nanny Coke School District stands to lose about two million dollars in revenue. Uh, I know the administration is very supportive uh, of education funding. That's going to be a big hit to Greater Nanny Coke area. Newport Township, the classification uh, as a township is going to change. Those 1,100 inmates are counted as population uh, to uh, Newport Township. That's going to hurt them in terms of state and and, and federal revenue. Uh, they're going to many of these uh, employees live in Greater Nanny Coke area. That's going to be impact to the local municipalities uh, and their tax base. Uh, and, and the loss of, of jobs. Uh, if, if there was a company in northeastern Pennsylvania that was threatening to close their doors and take 840 jobs out of northeastern Pennsylvania, we would move heaven and earth to put every incentive on the table to keep that company in Luzerne County. Here we have state government closing the door on 840 good family sustaining jobs. We're gonna fight uh, united with not only our legislative colleagues, uh, with the unions, with the community, uh, and the families. The families that are going to be impacted and devastated uh, uh, by the loss of those jobs uh, in, in, in the Newport Township community. With that, I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions from the media, if anybody has a, a question. I'll throw a general question to anybody here. Uh, the, the question I kept hearing all morning long across the area was, what was the big change less than two years ago when we, they fought and they kept this this prison open, and now, let's say 24 months later, it's being closed. Well, if you uh, remember last year, two years ago, they closed Pittsburgh, SCI Pittsburgh, and they closed Hamburg, uh, which is a facility similar to Whitehaven. So there's a pattern here uh, to close down state facilities that certain political interest groups feel shouldn't be open, uh, whether it's on the mental health side or whether it's on the correction side. 
So I think this is going to be a continued pattern of this administration to identify state facilities uh, and, and, and close them. Uh, and, and whether it's uh, on the Whitehaven side, move them into community care, uh, uh, on the correction side, uh, do more on parole, uh, and, uh, and, and, and lower the prison population, not by rehabilitation, not by taking someone uh, that made a mistake or, or committed a horrible crime, uh, and, and we're just putting them back on the street. We're starting to see that in the cracks of the parole system. So this is about public safety, as much as it is about sound policy uh, in, in the Commonwealth and about economic, uh, an economic impact to a community, by the way, uh, and, and I shared this uh, with the governor, we worked very hard as, as a Luzerne County delegation over the last decade to get unemployment to its lowest number in Luzerne County in 43 years. 4,000 jobs created in the last 20 months, five national companies planting their flag in Northeastern Pennsylvania, for the state government to halt that momentum, to rip that momentum away from us when we're trying to build back our economy, it, it, for me, is devastating. Uh, and and I, we need to make sure we keep these facilities open, these jobs here, and that state government has, a, has, a, has an investment plan in Luzerne County to keep our economy going. To, to the point of um, not having any indication, many of my conversations with the secretary never as chair of the committee, never included until being notified about this today. And, and so from that perspective, it's very disappointing um, to receive this news and, and to have it rolled out after the confirmation process, after the budget process, after all of it is signed, when we have the opportunity to hold uh, state government officials accountable. And so it, it is very uh, disappointing and frustrating that we're receiving this news. And, and as I said, the double whammy, all at a time when the administration has a task force on vulnerable populations that they're looking at and, and an opportunity to look at, can you repurpose uh, a White Haven to serve other vulnerable populations instead of completely shutting it down or using other opportunities to um, advance that. So we've missed an opportunity to look at that and um, I think we need to stand together and, and do our, our fight uh, on behalf of this. But, but to say I was surprised, um, absolutely. No advance notice on SCI retreat or Whitehaven. Uh, to the legislative delegation, uh, the members of the union notified on a phone call uh, uh, and then their members uh, were notified shortly thereafter, uh, just the other day. Uh, there was no conversation around the budget uh, on, on either facility, no conversation on policy, no conversation on the budget numbers. Uh, uh, this was uh, uh, it just, uh, again, a devastating blow to Luzerne County to have two facilities. Uh, and I don't know why there wasn't any calculation uh, about or if the two agencies were talking with one another that and I've I've tried to ask over the last couple of days a few historians whether or not there's been another time in the history of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania where two state facilities in one county in one summer are closed down I don't think that's ever happened before uh, th that it tells me this has not been thought through uh, and, uh, and 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 we're gonna fight uh, to reverse these decisions and we were uh given information from the secretary that this was all budgetary reasons. And in, in the months to come, we're gonna show where we can improve the budget, not putting public safety in jeopardy. So to make it, make it clear that if this is a budgetary reason that you know, SCI retreat is being closed, that you know, we're, we're gonna do our, our best to put forward with you know, legislators on making sure that that isn't the reason. Go ahead. Um, if the ret if SCI retreat closes as well as Whitehaven, where are these prisoners going to be moved, and is that going to put a greater stress on other uh, facilities throughout the state? The uh, secretary mentioned they will be placed in other uh, state correctional facilities that uh, they believe they have uh, the operational bed capacity is the term that, that they use. Uh, right now, I think that's well over 95%. Uh, so there, there for 1,100 inmates, uh, there's not uh, a lot of room uh, 
there is a hope in terms of the inmates that uh, that uh, relocation process is going to be a painful process for them and their families as well. Uh, but then it gets the public safety. I mean, we had uh, uh, we had two high profile incidents of a, a correction officers killed in the light of duty, one in a federal uh, facility, Eric Williams, and one uh, uh, in uh, at Luzerne County Correction, Chris Walls. Uh, that comes back to staffing and putting people, and in, 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 in uh, Pascoa had a member killed in Somerset uh, because the staffing ratios aren't what they should be. Uh, and so this is as much about the safety in those prisons, the safety uh, of, the, uh, of the guards and, and the workers in those facilities, so that will be something that we, we attack uh, on October 17th in terms of, do you have that operational bed capacity? Do you have the space? Do you have the personnel? Uh, the, the department has indicated that no one uh, will lose a job, uh, that there will be uh, an, an opening in a 65 mile radius. We have three, four uh, uh, prisons here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. That's still potentially a 45 minute to an hour commute uh, at, at one of those facilities. Will they be overcrowded? Uh, will their jobs become more dangerous because we've made a policy decision to move away from state prisons? Yes. Um, now, I know you said that you are still in like the, the putting together the exact details of budgetary savings. Is there any idea as to where, like in general, that could be coming from? In terms of savings, I, I, I think uh, Larry might be able to touch on that, but the, the majority of the operational budget at SEI retreat or any state facility is salaries, personnel. Uh, uh, SEI Retreat has about a $56.6 .6 million budget. Uh, somewhere near 50 million is uh, salaries, benefits, et cetera. If no one's losing a job, I don't know how you get to $40 million in savings. Uh, if every one of those employees is gonna still be employed uh, by the Department of Corrections, uh, they're gonna have to explain the math and, and how they get to those savings. Uh, their uh, list of challenges at SCI Retreat, uh, for example, uh, no infirmary. As I learned today from, uh, uh, from the union, there's no infirmary because the department shut it down. There was an infirmary there, but now they use SCI Dallas. Uh, so if you make it impossible for that facility to operate efficiency by the decisions, policy decisions you make, uh, then those numbers are gonna add up. Uh, but once you get behind, uh, uh, those assertions, you find out there's not going to be a lot of savings, and so why would you go through that economic trauma uh, and personal trauma uh, to the to the men and women that work at SCI Retreat when the numbers don't add up on the budget side? And just on the surface, uh, you know, we would like them to look at the uh, medical transports, how how they are doing them, and where they're transporting these inmates to for these medical procedures. It, you know, again, just to, to scratch the surface, that's one where, one place to start that we're spending an awful lot of money and overtime that officers are transporting um, inmates to these medical procedures. Any other questions? Yes. I'll go ahead and ask it. Um, Senator Baker, you talked about NEPA, you know, constantly taking the hit. Um, why do you think you know, time and again, we're being asked to close the local facilities around here and not in other parts of the state. Boy, if I had an answer for that, um, I, 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 I don't have an answer for it, but um, to say that it's disappointing that we're shouldering a full burden as a region um, and, and the impact will be felt in so many ways. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed that the governor and the administration wouldn't have the foresight to understand that impact and how much it means. So I, to say someone should have looked at the impacts and should have looked at, um, should be talking among agencies, uh, I think it's very disappointing. It, it's, it's almost tunnel vision. What's the response been like in Harrisburg? I mean, I know you guys clearly have talked about it amongst yourselves, but what are your colleagues in Harrisburg, uh, you know, saying about this? The, uh, you have to understand there are, there are some uh, uh, political interest groups that want these facilities closed, whether it's Whitehaven or whether it's prison. That's a very different philosophy uh, and political outlook uh, than I have. Uh, and, and there are some that uh, would argue that you shouldn't build your economy uh, on prisons and, and, and don't have much sympathy for the job loss. Uh, they don't know these families. I'm born and raised in this community, a family that worked 
at these facilities. My mom worked at Whitehaven until she retired. Uh, friends and family that work at SCI Retreat. Uh, this is about their economic survival. Why Luzerne County, why Northeastern Pennsylvania? Uh, that's an impossible question to answer. Uh, they have closed other facilities in, in other regions. I think the age of these two facilities uh, uh, play a role, but it, but it really is a, a political agenda to move away from these kind of facilities uh, and, and, and move it uh, to what they believe uh, is something that is more cost effective. Uh, uh, but I, I, I'm going to disagree in the cost effectiveness of whether that's going to community corrections, whether that's going to parole, or whether that's going uh, to uh, uh, believe that every person with an intellectual disability uh, uh, can be uh, fully included in the community. Uh, uh, that, that are their choices that families should make. Uh, and what we're going to do through this process from now till October 17th to try to be the voice of those families and make the argument that SEI retreat and White Haven should remain open. I should just add, we're not in session this week, so we will be returning to session in September. Uh, so as we return in September, that will give us a better chance uh, within the Republican caucus, the Democratic caucus, to uh, speak to our colleagues. And uh, But again, the, the, we do have a statute in place that wasn't around two years ago. And there's a reason why that statute was put in place, because other folks, other senators, other legislators got burned through the process and didn't like it and felt that there should be some formal type of process. And uh, any administration, whether it was this administration or the Corbin administration, would, would you know, sort of fought this tooth and nail because they just wanted to be king and have the executive authority and close it and not have to deal with all this. Well, thanks to the legislative process, and really uh, we could have overridden a veto had there been one. Now there is now a specific process in place and there are uh, months that have to go by before an actual closing can occur and that's thanks to a bipartisan effort to put a statute in place uh, to protect the communities protect us protect those hard-working uh, correction officers that are, are there every day um, protecting us yeah I, I don't want to give you the impression that there's not support we have a great team Senator Argyle uh, representative Neil Goodman were terrific Senator Argyle was the author of the bill mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that we have uh, uh, the public hearing uh, and it's uh, all regions, anyone that has a facility uh, have become brothers in arms with SCI Retreat because they know they may be next. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, we're going to have a great uh, legislative team, not only from northeastern Pennsylvania, from across the state to, uh, to be in the, in, the, in the battle with us. And again, just, just to echo on the, on the legislation for the prison closure, um, I, I was part of the closing of SCI Pittsburgh the last time um, I was the Western Vice President for the Union. And just to know now that we have this process in place and the time frames that we have, and you know some of the members can make some decisions instead of making split second decisions on where they may want to go to to work and where they may want to move to for their children to go to uh, the, the school districts or you know what else, whatever else is in the community is uh, very helpful. So. With that, we'll close it up, and any individual questions you have for anyone, we'll be happy to happy to take them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.